Hey there, everybody. We're here today um, again, another Saturday, and we, you know, usually like to keep we keep these open for all entrepreneurs to share their questions or ideas or comments. And we um, we're going to address something having to do with emails and follow up and that kind of thing. So um, I didn't know if there was anyone in particular that wanted to share their knowledge or have a question about that. Um, or follow up from last time. Um, we had a phenomenal webinar <laughs> last week um, and following up on that. So um, I'm leaving it open for you for anybody to get started and we can take it from there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for it. Ainsworth, did you have something you wanted to say? No, no, not yet. Okay, not yet. Okay, so um, Aslak brought up the question of, of emails and, and copy, and I actually had a conversation with someone um, yesterday about that, or actually might have even been this morning. And one person was, um, the person was saying to me that he actually provides, you know, copy for his, for his, all of his people on his team. And I said, that's, that's a great idea. New people absolutely need something that they haven't found their voice yet. They don't really know what to say or how to do it. So having like a copy and paste type of email series is a great idea. Um, especially for people starting out new or people who may not be new, but that's just not their forte. They're not really that good at it. So, you know, I always have an email series and I'm, I'm, I'm constantly, you know, tweaking things <laughs> as far as that. But what I tell a lot of people on my team is yes, use that series in the beginning, but you definitely want to start putting your story into that. You know, it's fine for the the brand new people who don't know, who think that they don't have a story yet, but you can even take the daily broadcasts that, you know, get on people, several people's lists, you know, email lists and see what they're doing, how they're writing. You could take theirs as an out outline and put your take on it or your version of it. There's always something that you can say about you to intertwine into your email copy. And that's what's important. That's how people get to know who you are and that's how they relate to you. So um, I don't know who else is doing that for their teammates. I don't know if anyone else. I know, David, you have a series. OK, go ahead, David. No, just to just to feed off of what you just said. In fact, um, I do. There are two reasons, actually, let's say statistically, that's going to help you in doing what Renee just said, especially putting more of yourself in it and writing the copy in the right way, let's say, and taking the time actually to, to write an email which you feel uh, is good, but don't overcomplicate it. <laughs> the reason, uh, the reason why I'm saying that is most of the time, especially as a new person, we're thinking about emails and we want to get the message across and want to make the sale and want to do all these things and we overcomplicate it. And that doesn't get you anywhere. Mm. Uh, it doesn't, and you, and it's okay to overcomplicate it in the beginning, but you are definitely wasting time. So uh, having somebody to write your email series or, or maybe your sponsor or leader or whoever you're following to write that uh, series for you and give it and then you can edit it to make it more yours is much better specifically for this reason. If too many people have the same emails, it's not going to reach the inbox. That's a, that's a default formula that many um, softwares or autoresponders have in their, in their system. So for example, even myself, I change my email series every three months. I have a habit of going back, editing, changing, and sending it then, and then seeing whether it converts or no. So that, like statistically, that's a really important thing to do. You can give your team emails, but make sure that they are changing or updating it. And that's the main result that a lot of leaders sometimes don't even say. Unfortunately, they don't, they don't even tell you. They'll give it to you as a package deal, but they won't say it up front. Um, so that's something that statistically is a quite a good thing. The, the other reason is that I'm going to use Renee and myself as an, as an example is but because we exchange a lot by email as well. She sends a broadcast, I really like it, I respond to her. Or she sees something that she likes in my email and she asks if, I, if she can use it. So there is, if you get on people's lists, you can slowly and surely start to evolve in having your own kind of style 
when it comes to emails what what personality rather how or how you can you can show your personality by emails that is true and and i do recommend that you get on again don't overwhelm yourself with being on too many lists because then that then that's just too much but a few marketers that you you know you trust that you see are you know very consistent i would say get on their list and it's okay to reach out to them it's a great idea you know to reach out at that to them and say, hey, I like this email. Can I use it, tweak it maybe a little bit? Most people are going to say, nah, no problem. I mean, but always ask permission because you know there, there are people who do not want you to copy their emails. So just make sure that if, if you're going to use them, just make sure that it's okay with that person. Um, I've had people say, no, I don't want anyone to copy my emails. And I respect that, you, you know? And in some ways, that's okay for them to not want you to do that because they probably are very aware that most likely that email may not hit the box or it usually goes to the promotions folder. Like if it's in Google, um, it usually goes to the promotions folder if too many people are using it. So, I mean, and again, you have to respect that person. If they don't want you to copy it, then don't copy it. Um, uh, go ahead. Another, thing, another thing also is that let's say there are a system many people promote and use the same emails as david said uh, if you use solo ads and many buy from the same solo ad sellers for example on udemy then the same person maybe get the same email copy and same email with different link only from 10 15 mm -hmm. different people yep I've actually had people, and this was back a few years ago when I was still using a lot of the copy and paste type stuff. I would have people say to me, I got the same email from seven other people. <laughs> like, yeah. And then, you know, I started to wisen up when I got responses like that because I, I the, the, the person was actually doing me a favor in, in many ways because it, it started me thinking, oh, well, maybe I probably should really start editing these or using my own. And then, you know, a little while later, I would have people saying, you, you know, you sound similar to some other people, but you're putting your own take on it. I'm like, yep, that's what I'm doing. So it, there was, for me, it was a progression. It was a progression from complete copy and paste, just changing out a link here and there to, you know, using that email and maybe, you know, changing a few words around to make it sound like me, putting my story in to now, you know, Yes, I do still copy a few people's emails every now and then, but for the most part, I'm writing mostly my own just because in many ways I'm kind of doing my own thing, but following a, a basic plan, but kind of doing my own thing. And I have my own story and my own things that I want to address in my emails. So it makes more sense for me to be writing them. So, yeah. Uh, can I just share my screen a little bit? I'm going to show you something from uh, uh, from uh, where is this? There, from uh, Click Magic. Here, do you see the screen? Yep. Yeah. Here you have uh, different emails, and I'm not sure if you know about about this feature. But if you take one random uh, IP address here, and you open it and I click on all link. Then I can go in and see how many times this person have been in a click magic link. And you see this rotator links, that's probably solo ads. Okay. All the rotators. So if I get this away, I can open another one. I, go here. I don't use click magic anymore. So, I mean, but for those of you who are using it, this might be good information for you. This person has been in a, a lot of lists. You see the dates here. I just scroll down and this never ends. Wow, so that's the same IP address? Yeah, and this is from SoloAd. Okay. So you see a person who are in so many different uh, lists. Of course, people promoting the same system, you can bet that people who are in this list they they get the same email from any a lot of people and they will just uh, burn out yep yep
I mean, if if I ask the question, no, I mean, bringing this maybe a little back, we're looking at things statistically, but maybe bringing it back to how do you write an email? I mean, what are the key elements? And I'm going to keep this question for everyone. I might give my views on it later, but what are the key elements for somebody who's new, uh, who's just starting out, who's understanding that there's this is a system that I can go about? What am I supposed to focus on? I'll just leave that question there and then no, I mean, no, it's a good question. Back, yeah. <laughs> Definitely a good question. Um, I, I suppose I can go first. And again, I'm I, I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm the expert or anything. Uh, but there's some key things that I feel need to be in there. Number one, you need to be putting in your passion, your purpose in every single email because that's what people relate to. How you do that is you develop your own type of style and your own type of voice. What, what's your why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Now you can say it in different words in each email, but it has, you have to have a strong purpose and a strong why, to, first of all, to even be thinking of <laughs> doing marketing. So, you know, mine is obviously my family, you know, wanting my own time freedom, my own financial freedom, that type of thing. Every email that I have, parts of that is in each email. I might say it in a different way each time because I don't want to be, you know, completely boring, but that message is getting across in each email. Um, you also need to be, you know, in, in many ways, educating people in, in your emails. You need to be talking about, you know, how, how can they promote what they already have? Okay. So if you have a system, you'd be talking about how your system helps promote. If you, if it's a specific product or service, how is that product or service going to solve a problem? in their life. That should also be in the emails. You, you need to address that in some way, shape, or form. And obviously, if you have something that you're promoting, have a link to that. Or if, you're, if you want to share maybe a blog post you did, or maybe some content you've done in, on YouTube or wherever, where you're teaching something or educating or sharing how, again, how you're solving someone's problem or pain point. I think those are important elements, you know, there's obviously more, but I want to give other people a chance to share what, you know, what they feel is important as well. I think uh, for me, when it, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay, good. I think one of the important, most important things in your email needs to be sending them to your online real estate. Um, even before you send them to your business opportunity so that what makes you stand out from everyone else is who you are. You, there's only one of you. So why not promote yourself as someone who uh, can understand their pain point and have a, a provide a solution for whatever brought them online looking for an opportunity to make money and sending them to either your, your blog uh, site or your YouTube channel or your YouTube playlist or something that helps them get to see who you are and then sort of letting your opportunity kind of come in the background so that they'll see that in order to align with you, they have to join you in Business X, you know, uh, because that's the direct way to get more of this type of information uh, from you that's going to help them uh, solve their problem. So I think when you're writing your emails, uh, the most important thing that you want to promote is, is you and how you, you are able to help them through this vehicle of whatever business that you're in. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, I agree with completely both uh, Darren and Renee in this, in this scenario, but as well, I think from, for me, when I'm writing my emails, it's about how I tell my story. Uh, which is including what Darren's saying of promoting yourself, branding yourself. You can creating more relationship with the with every person who goes to your list. Um, and at the same time, I treat them as my list for me is my customer service. So whether I'm promoting a business or not, for me that's a key element because of the fact. So I have to treat it that way. So am I giving a service that is? Uh, worth it for that person are they happy with it if they're not then obviously i will try to get make get the feedback that i need um and this is something that 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 in your follow-up series for example when you're writing your email 
you should go back to looking at it because um, following up on what you guys both said, another key element for me would be looking at the, at the titles, at the subject of the email. And the, I'm just saying this out of experience. I do know that I have started off with either too long titles in my follow-up series or something that I thought was curious for me, uh, but had too much negativity in the title. Now, when I say negativity, I mean words that reflect negativity. I don't mean they actually have negativities. For example, if you use no, or this can't happen, or I can't, I can't believe it, you know, stuff like that, that you're putting automatically a negative message to the person who's like, should I really open this message? Do I really want to open this message? And I noticed, for example, for me uh, and the audience that I am talking to, so my list, they don't respond to that. So I started to change that aspect of the email and say, hey, I'm going to put more positivity into it. I'm going to put more things that, um, that people would want to know more about or maybe exaggerate it and then bring them back to reality. Because sometimes you have to exaggerate things to bring them back to reality. And these are elements that, that exist in your email. You're still promoting yourself. You're still giving them a customer experience, but you're bringing them back to reality. So I, th this is something that added to what you guys both said. I would look at when you are first writing your email and maybe it's a time to give a little bit of a tip as well. Uh, most of the time, the titles or the subject lines for your emails are already within the body of your email. So take time to write down your email and you will find an attractive title by just looking. All right, we're back. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty, so we'll let uh, David continue with what he was saying before. Thank you, David. Yeah, so uh, just to get without the confusion, I'm trying to figure out what I was saying. But um, yeah, so we were talking about specifically the headlines and, and subject lines for your for your emails. And the tip that I was giving is that most of the time you will find it within your copy itself. So if you think about telling a story, usually when you're, when you're telling a story, the, the headline or the main key element that people look for is within the story itself. So the thing that I, I do as a habit or something that, you know, you can do even as a, as a newbie or a person who's just getting started with copy is write what you think is the message. Like I said, keep it, keeping it simple and make sure that you are telling or giving a story to the person. And then from that itself, you can um, have a headline that stands out. I mean, something that you're going to say, it might be a sentence, it might be a word, it might be an element that you want to, 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 to talk about will come out within that, that message itself. And you can use that as a story, as a headline and then see if it works or no. Another good thing because of this is that uh, there's a new feature actually if you are using Aweber. I'm not sure with the other autoresponders. So I'm not going to talk about that, but just Aweber itself. And th this is for anybody who does use Aweber. There is a completely new feature, which I'm very excited to test out and I've not yet tested it out, but it's a split test on your broadcast emails. So you can actually segment your list to a percentage and see what works the best for you. And this, in my opinion, for newbies is incredible because it actually saves you a lot of time within maybe your first month or whatever it is to see what works best for you. And so utilize the features that are already exi existing in your, um, to, to write your emails. But I would, I would specifically like the core element, I would say besides promoting yourself always and sending them to, to something of value is tell a story and keep it simple. Yeah. I, yeah, I got an email about the split testing from Aweber and I haven't gone through the training to, to learn how to do it, but it looks simple enough and it really is a great idea to have something like that. So yeah, again, I, I use Aweber as well and um, it, it's, it really is good for a new person and, and I often find I write my subject titles after I've written my email because for exactly the same reason unless I see a title that I really like and then I'm like that's a great title and then I'll write an email around that but it's usually the other way around like I'll see someone else's title and say wow that's a great subject line what can I say about that too <laughs> you know and you know 
but for the most part, I'm, I'm usually, I usually have some content to give or some story that I wanted to tell in my day or my week anyway. So that's usually what drives what I'm going to talk about. And again, um, and, and I've talked about this and I know Rob talks about this is about having a schedule, like a certain day, a certain thing, having a pattern, like, you know, Tuesdays talk about a certain thing. Wednesdays, like on Wednesdays, I, I call it winning Wednesdays. I'm usually featuring someone else on a Wednesday, someone else doing something that I see is very noteworthy. I'll either share their a video they made or if they're doing something special in their business, you know, I'll share that. You don't have to do that, but I, it, it's just consistency. It's just about, you know, being consistent with what your efforts are, sharing, you know, whatever value and content you can give. And that's how people really start to connect with you and, and they start to trust you. Here's an idea. The, uh, I'm using a thing uh, with my YouTube videos called vidIQ. And it will actually tell you if your title is too long or too short. So, and it also tells you if you got the enough tags or, or not enough. So, <laughs> that's a good good thing to use. Somebody could come up with a thing that would work with emails instead. <laughs> so. And I know in AWeber, they also do tagging in AWeber, but they, yeah. I think they refer to it differently. Um, is, is in that I think you can tag certain things like if you had what I'm using it for now is I used to have several different lists that someone came from and then I integrated them all into one main list so the tag for me is where they came from originally so I know that they came from okay this list that focused on this at one particular time that's where they came from but I know you can do it in different ways but vidIQ it, Again, that's another great idea. I think you you or someone else have mentioned that before. Yeah, I did. Uh, in fact, I've gone back and re-optimized some of my videos that I've done long ago. And uh, it, it gives you real-time feedback on the score of uh, what your SEO is for uh, people looking you up and what words they're looking for. So it also tells you if you're... Uh, Descriptions not long enough or too short or if it's too long. You have so many characters, but uh, it's kind of interesting for the title. Uh, you know, they give you, I think, a couple hundred characters to type, but it, if you type too many, it, it's, it already tells you it's too long. So, and then you, you can play with it. I did it on one of them where you just changed one word and it said, okay. Everything's fine. Puts a big red check mark next to uh, that part of the description. Yeah, those are those are those are the elements that I would like. You know, really focus on when when it comes to writing an email. Uh, what I struggled with, and I'm just going to share this. I think this could bring value to somebody. Um, what I struggled with in the beginning was actually repeating the same message seven times. 14 times, 30 times. <laughs> I struggle with this a lot, uh, especially creating my follow-up series. And what helped me was to um, literally listen or rather go through some free trainings of people who have, um, have solo ad businesses, for example, or basically, let me just close Facebook because it's beeping in the background. Um, the the value that you get from there it allows you at least to, to think about okay how do i repeat this in a different way i'm not a good i don't like writing emails somebody doesn't like writing emails how do they go about doing it right and literally what helped me was trying to figure out my story where i am what am i doing and how i can convey each aspect the 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 thing that's helped me the most is, is what Renee was saying before about an email schedule because that literally puts the follow-up series in place and I know day in and day out what I can repeat, when I can repeat and how I can repeat it. So if I have a message and I want to, I want to give the same message, but for a week, so seven emails or 14 emails there, I start off with one part of the message and I end with one part of the message. So I take the whole series 
as a journey. So that's another thing that you know you can use to break things down and give bite-sized information to information to people, rather than putting everything in one email and then repeating it again. Because this is something that I personally, as a as a new person going into marketing, copywriting, struggle with. How do I repeat the same message again and again and again and again for years? How? And if you resonate with that, for sure, this can help you. I mean, you definitely need to break it down into bite-sized pieces and that consistency will help. I don't know if anybody else struggled with this on this panel, but at least for myself, it was a big thing that I had to get away from because I wanted to give everything. I was excited enough. I wanted to give everything in that email, but it, it just, it, you can't do it. You'll get tired. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why many people just quit after like a month yeah. because they can't do it 30 days straight. Yeah. I, I could definitely relate, David. I used to struggle with the same thing, you know, when I was trying to figure out what what do I actually say in an email. And coming up with a schedule was such a great idea. I'm like, how brilliant. Why did it take us so long to figure that out? But how brilliant is that? So now, like, I don't really have to think that hard about how I'm going to do it. I know. Okay. So Tuesday I focus on a training of some sort. Wednesday I focus on a winning of some sort, you know, Thursday is usually traffic, you know? So now I know Sunday's always like for me, self-development day. So, you know, and then those other days in between I can, I throw in that like I'll might use an older email and revise it a little bit or look at someone else's email and, and go from there. Like there's, there's a lot that you can do once you have that pattern in place, um, it does make it simpler. It really does. And, and the more you that you put in, the better. Again, it's all about telling your story in different ways to come to help that to relate to whoever your audience is. And again, um, the important thing that we've talked about before is in your copy, people, you, you treat people as people. Okay. Um, one of the, you may or may not have been on, um, the webinar where I talked about this, David, where I, um, I got a response from, from some, one of my emails, and this was about two years ago. I talked about, okay, so you're on my list. That was in my email. And I got a response from someone saying, I'm not a list or a number. I'm a person. And that was a huge aha moment for me. I'm like, you are a person. You are right. That person did me a huge favor in me revive, you know, thinking about how am I going to be writing these emails? So yes, I'm talking to actual people. They're not a list. Yeah. They're an email. They're on the email list, but they're actual people. And that was huge for me. It was a huge aha moment that I was like, yeah, that makes so much sense. I'm actually talking to people. Um, if you get anything out of this, I would say you've got to communicate with people as people because we're all, it is about the people. That's really what this is about. So. Not sure if, I'm not sure if Aslak wants to say something, but uh, to, to conclude, at least from my, from my perspective to conclude, I completely agree that you need to treat everyone um, as they are. And the an, um, another thing that I struggle with, and I think that it could help in this sense, is um, we put ourselves in in the shoes of somebody who who doesn't know anything of what's happening. Mm. So you can literally simplify it in that sense. Like you're talking to some a friend, uh, whether it's through email or not. You're talking to a friend. You're talking to a colleague. You're talking to somebody who you know. You're acquainted with somebody who you know. And that like really helps to, to imagine. And in fact, all of the biggest marketers will tell you the same thing. Any, anybody in sales, what do they need to do first? They need to know who their target audience is. They need to define them. They need to know the details. They need to know what they're eating in the morning for lunch, whatever. You are putting elements there. So that's really a, a key thing to, to find out. These are the kind of people that I want to work with. And that helps you also filter your list a little later on. Um, over the last few weeks, let's say there's been one person who's randomly every now and then replying to one of my emails uh, or some of my emails and the responses are not negative. I wouldn't say they're negative, but they are, they've given me feedback to 
let him say like, you know, if you need anything from my, from me personally, just feel free to reach out. Otherwise, uh, you know, continue to listen to the emails. For example, yesterday, and this is something I picked up and I got, if you're a new person, I got this um, help from some other, uh, some other marketer because I'm on their list. And uh, the email that I got was spoke about micromanagement. And I was like, oh, I hate micromanagement. Let me write an email on micromanagement because I really do. And <laughs> so I started to write an email on micromanagement. And it was a, sh a super short email. Um, and I sent it out. And I got a reply back from somebody who just said, this is not possible for you, uh, for me and stuff like that. I'm working on a plan, blah, blah, blah. And I said, fine. If this person keeps doing this to my list, it's not, I, I can't, I can't react any further because the person is just reacting to the titles. They're not really reading the message. They're not really reading the email. They're not taking the time to do that. So um, my response um, was simply, you know, no hard feelings at all, but just to, to read and explain a little bit more of the email, but I have never received a reply. I always reply to this person. Always but I have never ever received a reply after that. So it's just the initial reply. It's an emotional response. And these are the things that you will get when you write emails. You'll say, why is this person not relating to me? And then change your email. Don't. If you, you see that the person is not the target audience that you want, keep your email as it is because it's better to stay, stay true, true to your story rather than change it because of somebody else or because of marketing sake, right? Correct. I, I totally agree with you, David. Like yeah. you be true to yourself and don't let anyone steal who you are from you because you, you're your unique self. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe we should all do uh, like the people on TV do when they, uh, you're watching a movie and right at the very peak part of something that's going to happen, they, here's a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so you leave it there and say, hey, come back, come, wait for tomorrow's email. Yeah, the hook. They call that the hook. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. They, they have a habit of doing that all the time. So, mm -hmm. Of yep. course, if you do, do a kind of uh, training video about, uh, it can be Twitter or uh, Instagram or whatever one video for example if you have a video so then you can have this hook and uh, hook and uh, and tomorrow we're gonna learn that or something but uh, if you have a newbie on your list uh, uh, a selling in the email is maybe not the best thing to do if, if you just sell uh, I have uh, burned a list on that uh, I, I was just selling in every email and that list burn out basically so provide providing more content training and showing how how you do this and how you do that because that's much of what we do our team the gurus charge five thousand dollars for to show you so if you can be the person who actually use the email to show the things for free so long they are have joined you or then don't even need to join you to you just give the training and the value uh, that will build up their trust for you yeah no matter no matter on whose list they are on um, it's true that if you do it as consistently enough, they will definitely trust you much more than, uh, than any other leader out there. But this is completely, if I might connect it to last week's webinar, even though I was not there, I did watch it and it has all to do with that. You know, um, the leaders become, when we become leaders, we will become busy. So you go out after the people who actually can give you time. It's the same scenario when it comes to the emails as well. Yeah. And I would say, if you think of key elements for any anything, if I break it down, I would say, firstly, uh, title, you can, it has to be something that opens, something that people want to open. 
don't ever forget that. And then the elements in the in the email itself should be as 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 I've said also, you know, more more consistent, more value based. Um, for example, I I'm going to talk about Facebook because in in some of in some way I treat Facebook as a list as well. So this is this is how I do it with both, and I I kind of connect the two. I don't know. I think most of us do that in the sense that we build our following by connecting the two, um, and it 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 just shortens the time frame of the relationship building and the rapport building that we can we can have over email. Um, but for example, I don't I don't pitch on Facebook. For me, Facebook is an extension of myself. Um, I'm going to share. I'm going to talk. And if somebody is interested, they will reach out to me. And that's been my strategy for about a year. And I I've, I've seen a lot of people actually have conversations with me and now are ready and are willing to listen to my, my statement when I say, Hey, everything in life is a risk. It's how much, it's how much you weigh the risks. What risks are you willing to accept? You know? So if you want to start a business, I'm scared. They're willing to listen to my advice if I give them something. Uh, so it's, it's the same thing. Like if you treat your email list as something that especially as part of your business in this sense, it's a customer experience and that's the mindset that I have, then it, it becomes easier to share your message. It becomes easier and people react to you rather than you reacting to them. And that's how I, I view both my email list as well as, as, well as Facebook. I mean, I, I do it in, in the same way. They're both extensions of myself in different ways. Facebook is more extension of myself where I just talk. I don't need to pitch. I don't need to promote. If people are interested, they'll get in touch with me. And my email is more my business side. So I do not pitch, but I do send them to an offer. I do send them to a video. I do send them to something because that's what's the purpose of it. So define the purpose of your list. You can have a list where you're only giving newsletters and you're only sending positive content about whatever, whatever you want to send. And some people will like that. But you have to have, I think, at the end of the day, it's connected to how you write your email. Find the purpose for your list. I agree. And there's nothing wrong with putting in an offer in, in your email. There's nothing wrong with that at all because ultimately that, that's what you want them to learn more about. And when they're ready, they'll click on that. You know, that, that's the thing. It's up to them to decide when they're ready for that. As long as you continue sharing who you are as a person, you're sharing value and you're consistent, that person will say, wow, obviously this person is, is going to help me. And then they click on the, when they're in their time, when they're ready, they're going to click on that link at the moment in time when they're ready. And it could be three o'clock in the morning. Who knows when, when it's going to be, but it's going to be when they're ready. And you know, that's fine. It's, but the key to it all is just being consistent. You know, you, you might make a mistake in an email or two, you know, so what? Move on. You just do it better next time. You, you know, you just keep going in anything in life. It's all about being consistent. That's it. Yeah. Anything else we wanted to share before we wrap up? No? no. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, and we will see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um,